hey what is up ladies and gentlemen Exonaut back with another video hope you guys are doing well this is a back to back video i don't do this this much but this is another video out today stella has just announced uh, this for protocol 19 so you know before we get into it you know it's not financial advice i don't want to say here uh, educational purposes only so let's get into it right so we've been hearing a lot about protocol 19 and the lobster wallet and all that stuff and uh with the assets i will do the whole lobster wallet and specific assets on another day uh, i'll set aside a day for that and you know walk through some assets and protocol 19 stuff and which assets you can get into and which you know it's going to be good uh assets to get into on the lobster wallet <clears throat> and that's going to be set aside for another day but let's get into the whole protocol 19 right so on june 8th uh 2022 still a public ne network validators will vote on whether to upgrade the network to protocol 19 to prepare for the upgrade check out the protocol 19 upgrade guide okay they're going to i will go into that uh if accepted protocol 19 will activate some technical challenge uh, changes that make it easier to build payment channels bridges to other blockchains and key recovery solutions on stella read uh, on stella right uh so if accepted is what they're saying but i do believe that this will get the vote and and stuff will go through because i have seen some stuff on the github on protocol 19 so this is definitely going to happen without a shadow of a doubt protocol 19 is definitely going to take place so it's not a if it's i think it's a matter of when you know they just have to state it that way right but let's see what's going to be what's new in protocol 19 implements two core advancement proposals cap 20 one introduces a new sort of transaction preconditions which are optional requirements you can add to control transaction validity time bounds which have long been a standard transaction precondition allow you to craft transactions that are only valid in a specific time based window the new protocol 19 preconditions allow you to craft eight craft transactions that skip sequence numbers set ledger bounds enforce relative time and ledger delays also known as relative time locks and require extra signers example hash locks cap 40 adds a new signer type that allows multiple parties to to build a set of transactions for signing that guarantee if one transaction is signed authorized and submitted information is revealed that allows all other transactions in the set to be authorized as well okay that's cool well let's you know the topic what protocol 19 was designed to do <clears throat> The protocol 19 changes were designed to facilitate the creation of payment channels which which are laid to protocols it's about high throughput use cases so you know laid to you're gonna have uh, your DeFi and the bridges and all those stuff that's gonna be supported and you know coming with protocol 19 you're gonna see a lot of side chains come in when this happens and this value gonna be high on XLM's network, Stellar network. So let's see. payment channels allow two parties who frequently transact with one another to move the bulk of the activity off chain while still recording open balances and final settlement on chain. Generally payment channels rely on a structured sequence of transactions, two parties open channel with an on-chain transaction that gives both parties control over settlement accounts right they then pass transactions back and forth validate them and sign them off-chain 
when one party is ready to settle they declare the intention to close the channel and there is a window of time for the other party to object the way the notified party has recourse is there is a dispute or the declaration of disclosure is premature malicious or erroneous if all is well the settlement transaction is submitted to the network and the final transfer of funds happens again but, but let's see I'm gonna skip through some stuff I'll, I'll drop this in the link below but prior to protocol 98 it was difficult to handle the rest of that process a transaction could only be valid if the source account sequence number was exactly one greater than the sequence number used for the previous transaction which meant that two channel you can you could also couldn't add a relative time delay of transactions which meant that there was no way to ensure there was a window to object to or invalidate settlement transaction finally combining signatures to authorize tra a transaction required a multi-part handshake that required extra messaging and slowed things down by adding new preconditions and a new type of signer protocol 19 solves all those problems i realized that explanation is a bit abstract luckily there's a concrete prototype of protocol 19 payment channel you can dig in to see how ev how everything fits together and then they get, they talk about starlight as well you know it's another part this is the main part of the code base and stuff with layer 2 and we get so Prior to implementing the protocol data changes in production, Stellar development for engineers used a sandbox to build a working payment channel prototype called Starlight by applying minimum sequence number, precondition to sequence numbers, adding relative time and legend delays to create a relative time lock and using the new signature type automatically. Authorize multiple transactions. Starlight tested out all the protocol 19 changes and the results are pretty amazing. Okay, so they're telling you that Starlight, which is one of the, I think it's the layer 2 that have tested out the protocol 19 and the results are pretty amazing. So there is without a shadow of a doubt that protocol 19 is happening. Uh, it's definitely happening. Right, there's no way this isn't happening. There's going to be a ton of things that come. As I say, Starlight is still a prototype and there's a lot of work to do before it's ready for use in production. With the advent of protocol netting, we're open to see some more ecosystem experimentation engagement. Uh, I explained Pendulum. You have Mount Exam, all those stuff that is going to come on. Uh, Stronghold, Trust, IBM, Worldwire. All of those things are uh, what else we have uh, there's so many projects you know that's built out on the Stella network that's you know gonna use the light uh, protocol 19 and stuff like that yeah there's like uh, what is the there's Ansley, this Stronghold, this Word, this Martlands, uh, this Lumen Swap, this Drift Exchange, this Lightment, all those kind of stuff uh, that would, you know, follow up with Protocol 19 and, you know, the use case and payment channels they get into that then this yeah like six uh starlight layer two payment channel protocol for stella and this is where they just talk about stella and you know it scales network in 2014 and but here's a starlight is a layer two protocol that defines a bi-directional half duplex payment channel at SDF. We have evolved the concept in the previous version of Starlight prototype by Interstellar to make use of new capabilities introduced by recent protocol upgrades CAP15, CAP33, as well as new proposals in 
in review is cap 21 cap 40 which is going to be the new this is going to be compliance and then kind of tell you protocol with the different protocols that we've done they tell you what cap 21 adds a new suit preconditions that can be added to transactions I think we went over this as well I'll drop that's why I said I'll drop this in the link below okay let's see what we have here the main part we've measured starlight producing 38 payments per second unbuffered and 1.19 million payments per second buffered in 12 agreements per second this was observed between two participants connected over the internet using, using consumer hardware and residential internet servants, services when those payments are flowing consistently in one direction wow. 1.19 million payments per second wow That's a lot. And then it says this measurement well exceeds the needs of enterprises building on the blockchain and enterprises transitioning existing high through loads to block these findings. Interesting to stellar users we frequently transact with each other where payment channels are applicable. You see that right. I'll put all this stuff in the description. This is the guide for the protocol 19 upgrade. The key dates. So that was done. Then this. Oh, okay. So we have May 9th. Uh, it's going to be the test net and then public network update once this goes. Okay. Right, then you see Stellar Core Horizon. They talk about upgrading the network and setting an upgrade time. So they already got yeah, the node, the commands already in place. Setting an upgrade time uh, June uh, T15. So they already got the time as well for that. The code's already done. I'm just going to push the code. Right. Uh, we covered that. Then this well, this is wire, and it's also another project that's on <coughs> on the XLM network, and they're doing stuff as well. I mean, with Stellar Lumens, uh, which I will I'm gonna cover this on another on another basis or on another day I would say uh I would cover wire. I'm not gonna do cover with the wire topic today. What you know they just announced as well today was Novati to launch Australian dollar stablecoin, leveraging Stellar blockchain. Right and before I get into this because you know I've been in the XRP space for a while I've seen you know Novati you know uh, this was April 3rd 2021 in a year later uh, in a month later I would say too as well we have them you know now with XLM that doesn't mean they left XRP you're going to have a front end and back end uh, movement of money Novati taps on demand liquidity to improve Australian remittance payments to Southeast Asia. Okay, and then you know they talk about the cross border payments, uh, seizing on the summit Novati Group transfer global's payment network tapping group was net on demand liquidity. So, 
servicing leveraging the digital asset xrp for instant cross-border payments right we have that uh i remit it's another interesting company that's another good asset to have on oh, lobster wall red uh right now we're back here Anovati Group, this was May 5th. Anovati Group Limited, a leading fintech enabling businesses to pay and be paid, announced this week it will launch an Australian dollar backed stablecoin leveraging the open source Tilla blockchain. Uh, now, this can you see this is for the liquidity part of what they're doing. But now here you have the stablecoin where the value is going to come in and stuff like that. You know, the first country to adopt Stellar blockchain for stablecoins is Ukraine. And you know what's going on in Ukraine and stuff like that. They are in the currency war. Right, so let's get back into this. The stablecoin to be called AUDC will provide a digital representation of the Australian dollar will be secured with a one to one backing of a Australian dollar fiat value. This provides a distinction to pure cryptocurrencies, provides a distinction to pure cryptocurrencies. So its fiat value is going to be behind cryptocurrencies which do not correlate or link to any particular market economy commodity or asset okay that's interesting because cryptocurrencies do is commodities and assets okay some things that doesn't really you know make sense and that's just my opinion as well this technology will also create a secure and payment digital record of all transactions and account balances which maintains the integrity of each transaction and provides a strong framework to maintain Novati's absolute focus on compliance. Novati believes that it is the direction that payments heading with growth in the demand for stablecoins only expected to accelerate by launching it. Australian dollar backed stablecoin on Stellar, a network designed for stablecoins and renowned for its speed, slow cost, and interoperability. New opportunities to power more seamless and near instant financial services emerge both domestically and across borders. Our keyword both domestically and across borders, but you know, this is where it hits home. Is it going to be more domestically used, red uh, and stuff like that, uh, for inner domestic remittances? Is what this will be used for, and how they go about the compliance of in the structure of things. And then just give a link and stuff about Stella. Yeah, this is just I will cover up on the other topics. Uh, you know, so just this came out at this time, and I want to, you know, just share what's going on here quickly. But we are going to do a good brief on this again, and come back to it and talk about the lobster wallets and uh, some projects and stuff. That's going to be very interesting with protocol nineteen. But as for today, guys, I will I'm out. I will catch you in another one. You guys have a good uh, weekend. Right, I'll catch up. Cheers.